Hey, call the yeah. roll, please. I agree. Moore? Here. O'Kane? Here. Shainer? Here. <coughs> Scott? Waters? Here. Would we open the meeting with the silent prayer and a pledge of allegiance to the flag to follow, please? Okay, Mr. McGowan, if you'd like to come to the podium. I'm glad I didn't use a first name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jake McGowan. Uh, I introduced the POW MIA Chair of Honor Program in 2020. Uh, I'm here today to present the portable chair for City Hall and, uh, and potentially the use of public venues across Sioux City. Um, I'm pleased that the chair's new home is here, and I just wanted to thank, say thank you to Councilwoman Shainer uh, for the donation for this particular chair, uh, and say thank you to Bob Scott for jumpstarting the, the project with his personal support and donation. Uh, COVID obviously slowed the program, but we expect that we will continue to place these chairs in stadiums, theaters, and venues throughout Siouxland. Uh, thank you again for all your support. Thank you, Mr. Thank McGowan. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Council Member Shainer. You're welcome. He gave such an impressive presentation at the Expo Center back in 2020. Yes, he did. And, oh, yes, and I have a stepbrother who was in Vietnam War, and I was about six years <coughs> old then. And as a six-year-old, you have no idea what's going on. They just say, you know, he's away, he's in Vietnam, et cetera, but you don't grasp that. But in Jake's presentation, and it reminded us of how many POWs there are, MIAs, over 82,000 of them. And I think this will be a good reminder for us on a daily basis of those men and women who didn't come home. So thank you very much. Thank you. Our next item two, interviews for city council appointed boards, commissions, and committees. A, Airport Board of Trustees, Eric Christensen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Will you please state your name and address for us and Tell Absolutely. us a little bit about yourself. My name is Eric Christensen. I live at uh, 291 Levy Trail in Dakota Dune, South Dakota. And I'd like to thank uh, the City Council for allowing me the opportunity to come here and talk to you and uh, I guess let you get to know a little bit about me. So um, I'll stick to a little more of the aviation and other related issues. But um, I am currently the City Administrator for the City of North Sioux City. Um, I'm also uh, an Air Force and Air National Guard veteran, uh, having been both a crew chief aircraft mechanic and uh, a communications operations uh, installation technician. Um, I have uh, both my accounting degree and my MBA from the University of South Dakota, and I have a 18 year history of working with and being in uh, uh, government finance, government accounting, budgeting, that background so with that I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone here may happen to have very impressive resume thank you yeah very any questions? So. I think your resume answers any question yeah. that I might have had <laughs> thank you a lot of experience thank you definitely for yeah. showing showing enthusiasm and applying absolutely I think you know with the issues that are currently going on with uh, trying to keep a commercial carrier here um, I'm hoping that uh, bringing my background to this uh, can in some way help us find ideas and solutions because in my role in North Sioux City, managing city government, you know, we're just as concerned economic development wise about that aspect of the, the transportation picture, you know, and we deal with it on a daily basis when we talk to businesses that want to come to the area, um, that ability to have that, uh, that transportation asset here is, is incredible and we'd like to make sure that it's something we can keep around the area for a long time are you developing an airport plan in north uh, the city, is, the city is not um, we have a gentleman that owns the airport that has plans to expand it um, I believe for the purposes of co-locating 
uh, aviation friendly related businesses to it. Oh. Um, the city at this point is, doesn't have any involvement in it other than having acquired some of his excess land so we can do an unrelated business project. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Joe Cruz. Good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon. And, uh, my name is Joe Cruz. Uh, I live at uh, Dakota Dunes, South Dakota. You want my address? Uh, 854 East Pinehurst Trail, Dakota Dunes, South Dakota. Thank so, you. Appreciate the opportunity to get in front of the council here and apply for the job. I, I think what makes it uh, attractive to me is I was born and raised in Siouxland. I've lived and had an office in all three states, so I understand Siouxland, number one. But more importantly, I have a huge passion for aviation. I'm an instrument rated pilot. I fly both commercially and uh, privately out of Sioux City frequently. I've had the privilege of being on the airport board of trustees for the last three years and the last year spent as president. And I think we've built a lot of synergies and I'm hoping the council will consider me for another three year term because I think we've got some good things going here for it. So. Very good. Any questions for Mr. Cruz? Thank you for your prior. Yes. Yeah. Thank appreciate you for your good work. Much. Yeah, it's very You're much welcome. appreciated. It's a privilege. Appreciate it, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, 2B Events, Facilities, and Tourism Advisory Board, Barbara Sloniker. Good afternoon, Barbara. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me here today. Uh, so I am actually reapplying for a second term on the Events, Facility, and Tourism Board. Um, I can say I've learned a lot in the last three years. It's been fun to see the resurgence and see all this quality of life types of things happening in Siouxland. Very important. Uh, my background, I'm a, a worked for the Chamber of Commerce for the last 25 years. So workforce is huge for us and having all of the amenities that the city offers and just have, helping them to be the best they can be, um, I think is really important to attract a, a viable workforce. So I've really enjoyed doing that. Um, I try to attend events, you know, whenever possible. And I think we have a great city and I want to be showing people, you know, I want to be able to get the word out of how, how great of city we have and the different things that are here. When somebody says there's nothing to do, they haven't tried in any way, shape, or form. And it's not just something to do, it's so many things to do on one weekend, you can't get it all done. So pretty excited to be on that. I'm also part of the Sioux City Regional Convention of Visitors Bureau Board, so I think they, they make a nice tie. You know, we kind of complement each other, so. Great. Barbara, so, could you me? please give us your address? Oh, I'm sorry, 1336 Buchanan Avenue in Sioux City. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Council. I really like that response. If, if somebody tells you that there's nothing to do in Sioux City, then they're not, they're not trying too hard or they're not they're looking not too far. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. We'll go to the consent agenda. <laughs> Items 3 through 13B constitute a consent agenda. Items pass unanimously unless a separate roll call vote is requested by a council member. Any person wishing to speak on an agenda item may come to the podium at the time the item is being discussed. Any person wishing to speak on an item not on the agenda may do so at the end of the regular meeting during citizen concerns. Please fill out a citizen concern card found outside the chamber's entrance and give it to the city manager who's to my far left, your far right. All speakers shall state their name and address for the record and then provide their statement. I'll move the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Alex. Uh, item three, reading of the city council minutes of June 6, 2022. <coughs> Agenda item four, resolution authorizing the police department to accept a JAG program grant for the Tri-State Drug Task Force. Agenda item five, resolution amending the authorized personnel complement, position classification manual and salary schedule by adding an art center special projects coordinator position. Item six, actions relating to workforce housing tax credit program. Items 6A through 6D are resolutions supporting IEDA applications to the workforce housing tax credit program by Kosovich and Murphy Developments, HCI Real Estate Company, SC Developers, and Roy Dave, Roy Dave LLC. Agenda item seven, actions relating to agreements and contracts, 7A, Resolution authorizing negotiations with Piper Sandler for financial advisory services. 7B, resolution approving a Taser 7 agreement with Axon Enterprises for 115 Taser 7 devices for the police department. 7C, 
resolution approving a supplement to the pipeline license agreement with BNSF Railway Company for the 6th Street Sanitary Sewer Replacement Project. 7D, resolution approving a consultant services agreement with Bergen KDV for audit services. 7E, resolution approving a procurement contract with Trojan Technologies for the wastewater treatment plant UV disinfection project. Um, I have a quick question on 7E for Tom. Tom, we, we had other bids received on this item, didn't we? Yep. Okay. And this was the low? This was the low. The low bidder. Correct. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. I just wanted to make sure we had, we had other bids that had been submitted. Yep. There was only two manufacturers that create equipment for our size of facility. And they both put bids. In fact, the other one had two bids. So we actually had three, and this was still the lowest. Okay. All right. Tom Pingle, Utilities Director. Thank you. Agenda item eight, actions authorizing payments. 8A, resolution authorizing payment to Mark Ablonicius for the Iowa for the Highway 75 water main replacement project. 8B, resolution authorizing payment to Miller Painting for the Leaf Erickson Pool Painting Project. 8C, resolution authorizing payment to Schoon Construction for the Airport Fiber Optics Bore Project. Agenda item nine, actions relating to property. 9A, resolution scheduling a hearing on proposed amendment number one to the amended and restated combined Central Sioux City CBD Urban Renewal Plan, property at 620 Floyd Boulevard and 901 Fifth Street. 9B, resolution inviting proposals for the granting of a temporary slope and grading easement in the combined Floyd River Urban Renewal Area, announcing the intent to accept the proposal of Mid-American Energy and scheduling a hearing, property lying south of 28th Street and west of the Highway 20 bypass. Good afternoon, Mr. Bertrand. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, Rick Bertrand, 1501 PV Street, Sioux City, Iowa. I missed my first agenda item that I wanted to talk about, which was the workforce tax credit. Could I, can I go back real quick uh -huh. on that one? I was here on two agenda items. Let me, let me just find, what number is that, It Rick? was... Uh, oh, 6, 6A through 6B. Yeah. I propose um, on a positive note that the city would consider passing, the council of passing a resolution. What they've done is they've, I don't know if they've inadvertently, I've had some talk with the state, they've kind of changed the program up a little bit more that kind of hurts Sioux City um, when it comes to the workforce tax credits. Now when it comes to stuff like townhome development or stuff that's within the inner city, they've excluded, is it Grayfield, Jeff? Is that what they call it? Greenfield, Greenfield, which is where um, there has to be an existing structure on it oh. from previous before. That doesn't seem like a big deal, but it kind of is in a community like ours where we have so much open space in between mm -hmm. there. Well, I'll use the example of really of Chestnut. If you were to rewind this um, and go back two or three years, that site would not actually be eligible now for the workforce tax credits. And as you guys know, we're up to almost 60 homes and millions of tax revenue up there. That would not, so I think that it would be wise for us as a community to, to maybe reach out, pass a resolution saying that we, they should reconsider in communities of need, which we are a community in need, um, how the workforce tax credits are being evaluated when it comes to these types of spaces. Okay. What was their reason? Marty, do you have anything no. to add to that about the Greenfield, Grayfield, all of that? Sure. Thank you. Um, Rick is exactly right. They, um, as you know, we've been working with a lot of developers like Rick that have done a lot of great projects in the city, and the workforce housing program is very helpful. And um, I'm told that this was an inadvertent mistake. Um, that's what it appears to be. So they, um, they removed, they changed the workforce program with some legislation this year that, among other things, removed a requirement for us housing analysis. But they inadvertently eliminated the way it's worded, the eliminated greenfield sites in the larger cities. So it's kind of, the program's divided into larger cities and smaller cities, and we're a larger city. Um, and uh, unfortunately, that the, uh, I've talked to a number of legislators and I talked to uh, some of the state officials, they, they, they didn't catch that in time to fix it before the legislature ended. So as you know, we've got about seven projects going forward, um, four today, and you've done two previously, and I think we'll have one more. Um, the, it's competitive. They may not all score high enough to get funded, but um, uh, I wish they did because they're all good projects. But um, this is going, uh, what we've been told is there is a category, kind of an infill, infill, grayfield category, that they will look at anything 
uh, that had something on the site before, uh, you know, kind of an in, to be qualified as a gray field in, in an infield. So infill, sorry, infill. Um, so um, we think that most of our projects will will be able to squeeze through on that, but but there may be some that don't, uh, unfortunately. And so and they only it's only once a year that you're allowed to apply for this program. It's a great program, uh, and we've had many, you know, dozens of projects in Sioux City that have received the benefit, but um, this is one we'll have to go back and fight for next year. Do we feel like that's going to be corrected in next year's session? I'm told they'll look at it, but you never know with the legislature. So if it was but really just an error, it should. It, it so was not, that's why, apparently uh, not intended. So that's, not intended. Why, that's uh, what I had found out about it as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, it was buried in the legislation. Our lobbyists didn't, weren't aware of it, and well, some of clear, our local legislators not were not. That the city of Sioux City has done to cause this. It was done. No, at no, the and it's, level. A, it's a, it applies across the state. Right, Mr. Waters, you had a question. I, I honestly Cooper? think Marty kind of covered it. I think that's, that's why, uh, respectfully, a resolution is always smart. Again, it kind of pushes things forward that it's like versus was this an error? Well, the first thing they're going to say is, well, is there a squeaky wheel out there? It was a, if there's no noise coming from the communities, then maybe the error was justified. So I think it would do us well as a community in need, classified as that, that we would put together just a resolution to send it back over to Des Moines saying that, hey, this was inadvertent. Yeah, and I, it just brings things to the forefront. It shows that that would that. That's the first thing they're going to ask: is that okay? It was a mistake, but who's squeaking? If it is, nobody's nobody's t you know, really yeah. talking about it, so I think it would be smart. So that was. I fun. totally Mar agree with yep. that, Marty. Could you, <laughs> Marty? Could you please work on that? Sure. Or yeah, yeah. I've I've already talking with PDI uh, group, and they've been working on that. But yes, we we need to do that. We will okay. do that. Okay. Perfect. Thank thanks. Uh, right. Second thing is on nine. Was it 9B? 9B. With Mid American Energy. And I'm, I'm not going to um, go into great detail today. I know this is just the process to set up the hearings that are out there. I just want to just continue to put my face in front of the council that understand there's a greater issue here that's going on in this thing. Um, I'm going to set the, the narrative, which is I don't believe that it is necessary for the Mid American project to move forward with grading, permit, with grading rights on the city property. Uh, their plan, previous plan, original plan, did not show. Uh, any t t touching the city property at all. They don't need the dirt. Uh, and, then, and then when you bring other developers in, other uh, neighbors and those type of things, all of a sudden the plan has changed to save them money. So I just want to set the narrative out there that as this moves forward, there's a larger picture here than just giving up some grading rights. We're going to be talking about giving away city property. We're going to be talking about how the property was condemned. And I just want to make sure that we go through the proper readings and, and I oppose any type of waiving of any type of readings moving forward as I think each reading is going to progress with other experts being called to this. And that's all I wanted to just say moving forward. So I don't oppose okay. setting the hearings or anything like that. I just want to make sure that we're out in front of this, that uh, that there is going to be great opposition for anyone touching the city property. Okay. Um, before you step down, Marty, could you please make a note to send Mr. Bertrand when this hearing when this uh, hearing comes up? I can't find the date. Is it um, July? Are we into July with that? The date. It's going to go it will be. It should yeah. be in the. Yeah, it's in the resolution, um, July. Yeah. 18th. Sorry, I'm July 18th. We'll be there. But we'll, okay. I just want to be sure that we're not going to just uh, they, that from their from their timelines and their with things that they're doing that they're not anticipating a waiving of readings or anything like that. I just think that, that we're not allowed to waive a reading. We have to things. schedule a 30-day um, okay. time frame before the hearing is held in front of the council um, and announce that uh, okay. the time and place for the hearing. Okay. The only okay. thing that could be done is if there's a possible deferral, but the council would have to do it. And can July I ask this 18th. question, Nicole? Is um, does the city have in the process of have any type of a comprehensive plan on that site is there is that something that is in the development through engineering that needs to be done prior to these hearings or anything because if you're talking about removing dirt or placing dirt or selling dirt off of the property at some point you have to say well how does it impact the property well it improves it well says who or it hurts the property says who is the city in the process that they have a plan laid out for that frontage because as we know the property behind us is going to be in front of us very quickly that butts into our property that butts into mid-american so there's a bigger bigger story being told here and this is this is trying to be done incrementally and quiet, quietly one step at a time to, 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 to um, go around the system. And the city is going to get used on this. We don't watch it. And so I want to make sure that, that we're... Yeah. Rick, that, does the city have any plans? Rick, in the, it, at this point? would it answer your question? If, is That's a good question. We want to give you the right answer. So yeah. can we look and make sure Perfect. we do have... That's it, guys. That Thank we you. do have plans pending for the, the, the city parcel you're talking about. Yes. 
and how far they're going to go into it. Yeah, utilities and that kind comprehensive, of how it ties into the state ground, how it ties into the ground behind it, what actually roads that they were going to do. They were doing a traffic study, have those traffic studies come back. They were doing water studies, have the water studies come back. They were going to do environmental impact studies, have those come back. Before we just go in there and say, hey, Mid-American, why don't you come in there? Or better yet, if they apply to buy the ground, if Mid-American says they want to buy the ground, at that point, does that become public let? Does that become something where someone else has a chance to bid on it at this point um, because of how it was condemned? Um, yep. So again, there's, there's just so many moving pieces that it can't just be an ole we're just going to grade the property and, and disturb it because uh, you're going to create cuts and to the south there, yeah sorry that was yeah, a lot rick i'm sorry i'm going to try to just yeah. answer a portion of that um i think you've been in touch with engineering staff regarding grading and have been in contact with public works yes. related to that um so that you, you know how that process is um additionally any uh moving forward with mid-american uh for something outside of the terms of the easement would have to be done by agreement that the council would have to approve and so that's going to be council approved which Correct. is why i'm setting the stage here right now and, and just so you know the foia that i sent through wasn't a poke of the bear or anything like that it was on advice from from engineering to make sure that i'm not trying to pull private you know grading plans or anything along there is when i submitted that foia for information on on the property and grading permits and stuff and and i'm not familiar with a current was, foia no, i know was there was three some... weeks ago yeah, okay i was gonna that. say i know there was something my the next past. question is that for me to keep things i don't want to look like i'm trying to i don't want to put staff in a bad spot as i continue to ask for information are you requesting that i continue to submit foias or is is what i've done sufficient without putting staff in a bad spot well, I will say that my understanding is that you're represented by legal counsel. So if your legal counsel wishes to contact me directly, that's probably the easiest way okay. to make sure that we have one clear um, line of communication. Timing is very critical, as you know, when these permits, as they get slapped and stamped pretty quickly. So my question is, again, is as, as we're searching for information on grading permits now being brought, I, want to, I just want to make sure that I get eyes on them. And I just want to make sure I'm not putting staff in a bad spot. Sure. If, okay. Just have your attorney contact Great. me and we'll okay. work on that. Great. Thank you, right. guys. We, Mar Mar we can provide more information on that, of course. Um, thinking about the question about planning studies, I would say I can think of three things. One, one is there is a water study that's underway <coughs> for that whole area mm -hmm. for potentially a new water tank and, and all that. That's, I don't think that's completed yet. There was a traffic study done for 28th and Outer Drive is part of the um, Mid-American project actually adding on to the traffic created by the new jail uh, law enforcement facility. Um, that was a kind of a short, a, a, a small scope, but looked at the need. I believe there's going to be a turning lane that's needed on, on, on that 28th and outer. Um, the third thing was we did take action, which had actually been in the works for a long time, to make that area part of the urban renewal area that um, uh, was kind of created to promote development out there, a larger area than this, but a larger area. So, so those are the three things I can think of. I'm Jeff may have some other thoughts on that as far as, but I, you're saying a master plan for this particular site, I would say no, <coughs> but I would say there's planning various elements of that in the area. What I was just saying, Marty, is if you're going to remove dirt or take dirt on, you talk about balancing site and value or devaluing the property, city property, I would think that you'd want to have, uh, well, not you would have, you would have, you, if you right. would ask that of any developer, yeah. if they're going to go in there, they would not remove or add dirt to I, property unless they know at this point what's... Uh, beyond what's the going. grading yeah. plan for Mid-American, I don't... We haven't done any kind of study like that. Is it fair so. to say that Mid-American's plan uh, did not include the city property? and it's They've, they've, they've submitted both. I'd have, I, I can't tell you what was in all their different site plans because that was reviewed by engineering, but yeah. the, the it's not the full parcel of the city, but the part that they're... Um, seeking the a temporary easement over yeah. has been included in their grading plan but um there's been different versions of it i suppose yeah, yeah. no just just for the record it has but the original grading plan was submitted and it did not include the city property it is being done basically for I, cost I, that would be a question for engineering i yeah, can't Gordon's in here. He's speak here. Yeah. so okay mm -hmm. thank you okay thank you. thanks rick anyone else on 9b Okay, agenda item 10, purchasing 10A, resolution awarding a purchase order to Riverside Technologies for laptops and monitors for city PC replacement. 10B, resolution awarding a purchase order to MB companies for an SRE rotary plow at the airport. 10C, resolution awarding a purchase order to Stryker Sales for two Stryker Power Pro ambulance cots and one striker MTS power load cot loading service uh, loading device. Um, you don't need to come to the podium for this comment. 
but you don't need to come to the podium for this comment. On a personal note, your team did a great job this past weekend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I appreciate it. Oh, very timely, very professional. Um, agenda item 11, applications for cigarette, tobacco, nicotine, vapor permits. See the list. Uh, agenda item 12, applications for beer, liquor license. Please see the list. Item 13, board commission and committee minutes. Review the list and come forward if you have any questions. This ends the consent agenda. Is anyone else to be heard on any item on the consent agenda? Okay. I'm gonna call the vote. Call the I'm sorry, what? Oh, I just wanted to, before we move on, my name's Jose Garcia. Okay. I'm an intern at Ho-Chunk Capital for H yeah. HCI Real Estate. We just wanted to say thanks for considering our um, our housing uh, ta tax application. Oh. And just want to introduce myself. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, same thing. I'm Isabel. I'm an intern with Ho-Chunk Capital. Uh, located here in Sioux City, Iowa. We just want to thank you for considering our application. Perfect. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Welcome. I hope it's a good internship. <clears throat> it is. Good. Okay, you're going to call the roll? Call for the is vote? Is a particular item? On yeah, it was HCI, the uh, workforce housing. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, O'Kane? Aye. Shainer? Aye. Waters? Aye. Man Moore? Aye. The consent agenda is passed four to zero. Each of the following items require a separate vote. Ordinances, agenda item 14. Ordinance amending chapter 19.20 of the municipal code entitled fireworks to provide for restriction of fireworks sales locations consistent with Iowa law. Who will be presenting? Stephen Pastolka. Oh, I'm sorry. There you are, Stephen. Hello, Stephen. Uh, Stephen Pastolka, City Legal. Uh, <laughs> essentially, in the last uh, legislative session, the General Assembly made it so that. Stephen, uh, I'm sorry. Just yeah. I, I have to move the item, so I oh. move this item 14. Second. Thank you, Alex, and thank you. Not very often I have to get up here. So. <laughs> Not very uh, often that I miss something. <laughs> I hope. Uh, Thank you, Stephen. So in the last legislative session, the General Assembly uh, provided that uh, cities are not allowed to restrict uh, firework sales in any areas that's zoned uh, commercial or industrial. Uh, already, we had firework sales allowed in general commercial and business park. There's a few other zones in which firework sales would now be allowed, such as uh, suburban commercial or general industrial. And this amendment essentially just uh, brings our own city code in line with state code. Any questions for Stephen? Appreciate the update. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else to be heard? Okay, ready to vote. My name is Mark Solheim. I live at 2009 Gerritsen Avenue. And I would like to know just exactly what the specifics are of that. What were they then? What were they now? <coughs> and uh, what the change is in the current ordinance, yes. Mark. Now, I, mean, I, I understand I'm partially deaf. I could not hear exactly everything he was saying. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. You know, so. Well, stay, stay up here, Mark, and we'll, we can answer it. You have your red line copy with you, don't you, I, I do, yes. Um, so I, if you'd like to see this, you can. I'd love to. <laughs> so the copy that I've handed you there shows uh, the prior version stricken out and the new language included in there. Uh, again, the, f the effect of it is to allow firework sales in a few more zones that they weren't uh, previously. Again, that would include things like general industrial, suburban commercial. The fire zone three, Stephen, is pretty much all of the city except, what were the, what were yeah. the exceptions? So the, uh, the previously we banned fireworks sales uh, in anywhere other than fire zone three. The effect of that, and we're keeping that through here, the effect of that is that it keeps fireworks sales out of the downtown area, which is fire zone one, 
and the near west side and sort of around the downtown area, which would be fire zone two. Uh, so now to sell fireworks, it has to be in an area that's uh, commercial or industrial and not in fire zones one and two. Okay. So what's the fire zone one and two? Uh, the downtown area and the near west side, essentially. So they can sell fireworks in any residential area in Sioux City? No, you cannot sell fireworks in a residential area. It has to be in a commercial or an industrial area. Mark, okay. Mark, if you, Mark, if you go to that red line <coughs> copy you have there, at, at the- There's enough red line on this. Oh. The strike through and underline, but the there's, strike- there's some things that are, that are stricken out. Well, see under B there where it says, it ends with, and only in zoning districts defined as non-residential districts pursuant to section 25.02.040. Consumer fireworks may be only sold in fire zone three. Only fire zone three and only in zoning districts defined as non-residential districts pursuant to sections. Now say there's a fairway over in Leeds. That's kind of that's kind of to me is a residential area. So can they fi sell fireworks there? Uh, I'm not sure what that particular property is zoned. I'd have to look at the zoning map. So you're saying, Stephen, if, that, if, if the grocery store is zoned commercial, but, but they're surrounded by all residential, distri uh, residential district, they could, pro they could still sell because it's zoned commercial. That is correct, and that is solely the choice of the legislature. We have no authority to do anything other than that. I understand. That. This is, to me, and I, I understand that the city has no options in this matter. <laughs> it is a huge step backwards for the state of Iowa. It really is. Fireworks are a danger to the life and safety of people in Iowa, and making them more readily available does no one any good. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second on the floor for the first reading. Is anyone else to be heard? I have one question. Um, is there anything from this last legislative session that restricts the time frame in which fireworks can be sold? Uh, not that I recall. No, it's still the full time period beginning in June um, through July, or the beginning of July, I believe. I, I'm not aware that anything has changed. We don't have the authority to change And we that cannot regulate the time period for sale. Cities are only allowed to regulate if you have fireworks, if you can allow them to be set off or not, and the time period for which a city may allow that. That's the only regulation that the city um, may impose at the local level. Okay, thank you. Anything yeah. else? We're gonna wait until you sit down again. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Mr. O'Kane. Get my steps in. <laughs> you ready to vote? Okay. I'll call. call. The vote. Thank you. Jayner? Aye. Waters? Aye. Moore? Aye. O'Kane? Aye. Um, any objections to waiving the statutory rule, or would you want to wait another week to do the second and third readings? It, this is related to a legislative change from the spring. Um, city staff would recommend proceeding forward, so we're in compliance, but we'll defer to the council's wishes. Any objections? No. Well, then I'll move that we waive the statutory rule. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Alex. Mm -hmm. Waters? Aye. Moore? Aye. O'Kane? Aye. Shainer? Aye. I'll move the second and third readings. Second. Moore? Aye. O'Kane? Aye. Shainer? Aye. Waters? Aye. Okay. You raised some good points, but it's state law, and I'm glad you made that distinction, Mr. Solheim, for us. State law versus what we can do in the city, so thank you. And thank you for your participation in this. Um, agenda item 15, citizen concerns. Are there any citizen concerns? I live at 2230 Beck Street here in Sioux City, Iowa. Uh, lifelong member uh, of the community. And uh, my question is more of a proposal as much as any kind of issue. Uh, I recently retired from the Air Guard after a long time and I, I started getting into some recreational riding on what's called side-by-side -side, or OHVs. Mm -hmm. And started learning that there's quite a few counties in the state of Iowa that allow these things to be driven on their streets. 
So I wanted to present to the council, is that something that Sioux City has considered doing, is allowing these OHVs to be operated on our city streets? As of now, I've been told by the police department, it's not allowed in city proper. It's allowed in the county itself, but not in the city proper. Um, I know you can go across the, the state line in South Dakota, license it there, drive them all over wherever you want to. Um, so I guess that's what I need to find out, because I'm a motorcycle operator too, and these OHVs are way safer than motorcycles. So, Mr. Padmore, my question is, I, I don't think your question is, are, have there been any proposals before us right? or that we're considering? Not that I'm aware of. No. Yeah, not, not that I'm aware of either. Are, what does it you, take to change that, Nicole? Um, sure. And I, I don't know if the police chief is available to come back. He has expressed a strong position against allowing them within the city limits. Um, the city would have to designate, I believe, by ordinance allowable areas and come up with a regulating uh, way to track that. Um, it's been a few years, I think, unvisited. I know it came up several years ago uh, to the council, I think, by a citizen presentation. Um, but staff can certainly check into it more if that's the direction of the council. So I had, I had spoke to Captain uh, Kirkpatrick, you know, at the police department because I was told by uh, some of the folks to speak with them to see what their concerns were. And he told me that their, his biggest concerns from the police department was noise, and the tires, not DOT rated tires type of thing. And uh, we both chuckled about that because he has a side by side, he operates on his property. And uh, the noise thing to me is, uh, if anybody's ever ridden a Hardy Davidson or seen a Hardy Davidson, yeah. you know, way louder than an OHV on the roads. Um, and I'm not talking about driving these things down the interstate. I'm talking about driving on city limits at 25 mile an hour neighborhoods, you know. So tire issues, DOT tire issues are more for the higher speeds and higher rated uh, conditions. So I think that's the, the biggest concern he said, and he said, you know, he has concerns about motorcycles and scooters and everything else that are on the roads as well. So um, these would actually end up being licensed vehicles that would have their license plate and have to follow the. Absolutely, and that's line. what South Dakota is doing now. You know, right. and I have my license in South Dakota because we go to Rapid City, and I can mm -hmm. drive it through Rapid City and, and the hills. And like I said, they have seat belts, they have headlights, brake lights, turn signals, horn. You know, more than most two-wheel vehicles have that are on the streets. So I have one. May I, su may I suggest this, that Mr. Padmore and our uh, chief of police get uh, together and discuss that and maybe make a report to the city council and the mayor? Yes. And then we'll have your name and address and we'll follow up with you on that, okay? Okay. I would definitely like to see some safety information or statistics on crashes in them or or anything like that. I previously taught in South Sioux and I can tell you the way people drive those around and go up on sidewalks is, is not something I'd want my kids around. Sure. So I'd like to know a little bit more about the safety features, <coughs> right. how right. safe they are to operate. We'd have to look okay. at that. Thank you for bringing that to our well, attention. I appreciate you hearing that. Yeah. And, uh, sure. Taking Thank that you. for business. Then. Thank you. Thanks for coming down. Have a nice evening too. Yes, you too. Thank you. Any other citizens concerned? Council concern. Council member O'Kane. Well, tonight, it's a hot day up there. And um, there is the Neighborhood Network Family Fun Night at Lewis and Leif Erickson Pool is tonight. Swim, there's food, um, should be a, a ton of fun. Um, Dan and I both went to the Long Lines uh, climbing ribbon cutting. Um, I challenged him to a climb. He chickened out. Let the record show. I had the wrong shoes. <laughs> the wrong shoes. There we go. Um, and, and we learned a lot about it, too, the way they were able to kind of hone in on the operation. Um, they're going to be offering yoga um, and plenty of other things as well. Um, it, it's a really nice facility, and they've got big plans for it. They're extending their hours on Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, starting at 5 or 6 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they're going to have extended weekend hours as well. Um, so even if climbing's not your thing or if you're looking for a more well-rounded experience and, and you need some time to relax and maybe practice some yoga, um, they offer a little bit of everything. Or just go and hang out and they have food and drinks and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, I also wanted to make a quick note to remind the public that the warming shelter is open Monday through Friday during the summer. This is the first year they've been able to do that. Uh, but they are open during daytime hours. Um, <coughs> so if 
anybody out there is, is um, trying to shepherd people into, um, into resources that they might need that are suffering from homelessness, make sure that you know the organization that you're directing them to and when they're going to be open. Um, so they are open Monday through Friday from nine to three during the summer hours. That's everything for today. Okay, thank you. Council Member Shaner. Mr. Waters. Yeah, I would just share. Um, <clears throat> I was thinking about it because there's a rush hour connect this Thursday at the Orpheum. Um, and I was reminded that I just wanted to share with the rest of the council that there's actually a program called Summer in Siouxland. Um, and this is the second year that it's been going on. But what they do is we bring together interns from all over the community, all over Siouxland, um, to really kind of showcase the community, showcase. Um, different properties or where people interns might want to go or if they should become employed in Sioux City so we showcase and tour around um, apartment complexes the Orpheum Theater we had our first event last week um, was actually at the Warrior and so we got to do a tour of that just really meant to be a professional um, a professional and personal networking opportunity for these interns that come from all over the country um, to our community and so such as those interns um, that are working with Ho-Chunk Capital. So it's a pretty great program. I think this year we had something like 56 interns from all over the region um, joining us for this program. So it's a pretty cool thing. Thank you, Alex. So yeah. That's oh. great. Yeah, and you're showing cool. them reasons to stay here. Exactly. <laughs> Just trying to showcase not only yeah, professionally what they can do with their career after they graduate from college, but also um, just even personally, like going to downtown live and then we go to saturday in the park and then we go to an explorers game and do kind of all of those different things to showcase so yeah it's been a lot of fun so the next one will be thursday um and after the program on thursday we will actually be going to the rush hour connect so if any of you are there um we're hoping to welcome some of those interns there too so that's all i have thank you alex uh just one thing on fireworks i got my water billing <laughs> And in the water billing is this Sioux City Fireworks Celebrate Respectfully. The sound of fireworks can trigger PTSD for veterans and cause pets to become anxious. This 4th of July, please respect your neighbors and celebrate responsibly and safely. We can legally discharge fireworks in Sioux City, Iowa, July 3rd and July 4th from 1 o'clock p.m. to 11 o'clock p.m. I want to be abundantly clear what council did today on the fireworks ordinance dealt strictly with the sales of fireworks, not the discharge of fireworks. So we have two days to celebrate. I also want to remind our citizens that we have some really, really good professional displays of fireworks. We're going to have them at the Explorers Park. We have them at Rivercade. We have them at Saturday in the Park. And I think there are some others. Mark, we probably need to get a full list of where the professional displays are. But those are safe, they're fun, and they're, they're actually beautiful fireworks. So please, 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 we're asking all of our citizens, all of our residents to obey the law July 3rd, 1 o'clock p.m. to 11 o'clock p.m., July 4th, 1 o'clock p.m. to 11 o'clock p.m. And if we can do that and we can pull together veterans, uh, those with medical conditions, pet owners, Pets will have that advance notice that there are going to be two days where fireworks will be discharged and we can prepare accordingly. So I make that plea. I'll probably make that plea every Monday until the 4th. And I just pray that it works. Uh, that's all I have. I'll uh, move to adjourn. Second. Oh, I'm sorry, was there somebody? Was there somebody else? Nope. Second. I don't want to leave anybody out. Okay. They said I moved Alex seconds. Moore? Aye. O'Kane? Aye. Jayner? Aye. Waters? Aye. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening.